It's important to have self-confidence, but this doesn't mean that you should be wrapped up in yourself. Roshan Isaacs is the MD of Style Africa Fashion Network, and she has every reason to feel that she's made a success of her life. So it may seem surprising that humility is one of the qualities that she admires most. This isn't the only unexpected angle to her view of life, as Karishma discovered. If you get down to basics, a scarf is little more than a length of fabric. But Roshan Isaacs transforms it from being a mere accessory to becoming an integral phrase in a style statement, simply through artful knotting and folding. That's just one of the many skills and talents of this Cape Town-based fashion fundi. And she was styling a photo shoot for the current season when Karishma arrived. Roshan Isaacs is known as the queen of turbans and scarves. But she's also skilled at modest wear styling, the MD of a very successful blog, an all-round inspirational woman. And I cannot wait to meet her. While turbans may be Roshan's trademark, she also knows what a fascinator can do for an outfit. Hi, Karishma. So nice to meet you. So and lovely to meet you. Welcome to Mela. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Roshan, how did this all start for you? It started all the way to the day I was born in the fashion industry. <laughs> and uh, my dad sort of had, he was his influence on uh, my life. It was always brown paper, scissors and cardboard and material around the house. So designing was in my blood. It's something that came naturally to me, but it wasn't something that was encouraged. So I ended up in media and I love media. Now your dad was a designer. How has he influenced your life and your career? My dad designed for high fashion brands and he designed all of our clothes. I was spoiled by the fact that my dad could make my clothes from a very young age. We were his dolls. And while I started making my own clothes when I was about, I think 20, I I had his helping hand. I heard that he designed your wedding dress. That must have been so special. Because my dad knows us so well, each of his daughters had a special place in his heart. Because he sees his daughters as queens and I happen to be the golden girl, my dress was golden and it had a Victorian color because he saw that. He saw the princess, he saw the queen and the golden dress just, you know, it, it sort of brought through what he felt and what his relationship with me and him was. Roshan is the MD and editor-in-chief of an online fashion publication that is proud to position itself as being for Africans by Africans, with a mission to inspire South Africans to buy locally designed and manufactured garments and accessories. Why style Africa fashion? Although I thought that fashion was not something I was going to go into at all, I ended up there somehow when I saw the gap in the South African design industry. I was looking at the beauty that was created with people's minds, with their hands, just things that are unique to South Africa from our materials and our prints as well. And no one was taking that and exposing that to the world. This is a proudly South African blog. What makes you proudly South African? So I was born and bred in Cape Town. I've stayed in Johannesburg, I've visited Durban, I've toured and uh, had business in the rest of Africa from Ghana to Tanzania. So I'm well rooted in terms of South Africa. And when I look at South African design, it's not specifically only South Africans, but anyone who influences the economic environment of South Africa as well. So if I wear something international, there must be some sort of appeal from that person that has an African connection because it's that whole concept of drawing Africa to the world that I'm trying to create. What are some trends to look out for for autumn and winter? Well, it just so happens you are on set on one of my shoots. So I have three models that I've just styled and I'm happy to show you. That would be awesome. Although Roshan is not a professional model, she has an innate ability to make a striking impression on camera, especially in the modest wear domain. Because I'm looking at autumn, winter, I would go definitely pastel and you'd notice that the look I'm going for is also vintage. So I've paired this up with some amazing garments and everything you see here is specifically South African. So I've paired up some of these with nice jackets and everything because we don't know about the weather here. It's like, is it cold? Is it, is it hot? Is it going to rain? You'll notice that even the shoes have the pastel colors in it. If you look at old Hollywood as well, you always see the silk scarf. And whether they're tying it in the front, what I've done is I've designed it in a way that has that old Hollywood turban look, but I've literally done this myself from scratch. 
The word turban is deceptively simple because it doesn't hint at the endless ways in which the basic concept can be explored. So Karishma, I've laid out a few different fabrics and materials and uh, just headgear accessories. Just to explain to you what I work with. So there's so much you can do with just adding one piece of accessory. Okay, this is the normal way that you know you find most people wearing their scarf. And usually when you find one scarf in your wardrobe, you see this one scarf in one style. But I can show you almost about 10 or more styles with just one scarf. The Muslim people wear it this way, right? And I've recently also shown someone how to wear it basically from underneath as well. Can you take me through the significance of the head wrap in Muslim culture? It's to guard your modesty and the scarf, the head wrap, is part of it as well. Everyone sort of just wears it in the same way. So I infuse the turban and the head wrap all in one and that's exactly what I've just showed you now. So the classic head wrap would be just to, and this is all one scarf, so I'm going to remind you of that, <laughs> is just having your scarf wrapped like this. But if I needed to cover the neck area, I'd basically either twist this, depending on the height or whether I have a pole in it, and I can put it that way, or if I wanted to keep the wrap, I could give it a more regal look and have it twisted on the side. And those are just a few styles that you can do with just this one scarf and there's so many more. It also has quite a lot of significance with African culture. Yes it is. The Nigerians wear the chele. The chele is a thicker starch material and that creates that sort of high sort of look as well. And the influence of sub-Saharan Africa which is where the turbans actually started. And now it's become a global trend. Yes, you see them on the fashion weeks, on the runways, and I feel that a turban is the crown. I'm so intrigued. Would you mind styling a turban on me? I would love to. Yay! <laughs> right, so I'm going to take the black scarf, and what did I say? The first knot is the most important. And I would actually just twist this. And bring it under, and then just bring it over like that, okay? Yes, now I and see how it's already shaping your face. And remember, the way you tuck as well, always twist and tuck, because if you don't twist and tuck, then it's going to come loose. It looks oh. so elegant and beautiful. And if you don't want to go gypsy, you want to go jazzy. <laughs> that looks amazing. <laughs> Do you have any top tips for our viewers at home? It's all about understanding your face. The first knot or twist is the most important. So even if you're wearing a silk scarf, it's going to stay on your head. And three, just make sure that you're comfortable with it. If you're not comfortable and you don't like what it looks like, the more likely everyone's going to feel that uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I'm dying for a coffee. That sounds good. Let's go. Let's go. It took a leap of faith for Roshan to leave the success and security of a media career to follow her passion. And Karishma was keen to find out more about her inner motivation. Roshan, what inspires you? Life inspires me. Learning inspires me. I love to, you know, grasp everything around me and just learn more about it. How do you define success? Success to me is seeing success in others that I've helped or guided along the way. Do you have any words of wisdom for women? Your role as a woman is that of a nurturer. And don't be afraid to use that in a boardroom setting because I found many women try and be the man. You don't need to do that. Roshan, thank you so much for spending the day with me. I had so much fun and I've learned so much. I'm so glad and it's been great being in your company as well and styling you and, you know, just showing you what I do all in a day.